Hey everyone, it's Jill Winger with theprairiehomestead.com and today I'm here in my barn and I'm going to do a quick little video um, and show you how I go about milking my cow. Um, this is Oakley, she's our four-year-old brown Swiss and as you can see I have her just standing tied here. I don't have her in a stanchion or a chute. Um, this is where I do all of my milking usually. Um, we have this little concrete pad that came with a barn when we bought it and it works pretty well. Um, there's nothing wrong with using a stanchion or a chute but when we got her I didn't have the time or money to put one in. And so this is kind of what we were stuck with. And so it kind of forced me to have to teach her how to stand tied and to hold still. And actually it was a good thing in the end. So um, if you do have a stanchion, that's great. But if you don't, I encourage you to spend some time with your cow and it'll help you and her both learn each other a little bit better. Um, I just have her tied up with a really basic horse halter. I'm a horse person um, by trade. So I kind of do a lot of horsey things with my cows. Um, but it works well and, and she stands. Sometimes I'll feed her and sometimes I won't. It kind of depends um, what time of day I'm milking. Um, I figure if I don't feed her it's not the end of the world. She has so many hours a day she can stand her out in the pasture. She can give me 10 minutes of that for milking. So uh, what I do first is I, if it's summertime like it is right now I'm gonna spray with some fly spray. This is my homemade fly spray. Um, I posted the recipe earlier this week on the blog. Um, along with a bunch of other sprays and so I spray her down. This just helps keep her more comfortable and less fidgety while I'm milking and it keeps me from getting whacked in the face with her tail. Well, I'll probably still will get whacked in the face but I won't get whacked quite as much. So I'm going to spray her down and next I like to um, wipe down her udder and there's a bunch of different ways you can do this. A lot of people use um, an udder wash or different soap solutions. I prefer just a wet towel. Um, it does the job and it's not harsh on her skin. I know some people use bleach and I really wouldn't recommend that because that's just, I don't like that on my skin. I really don't think it should be on her udder. Um, but this, just a wet towel, I save some towels from garage sales and use those. And I'm just going to wipe down her udder. This is going to um, eliminate any manure or dirt that's hanging out on her teats. It just gets her clean. And it also is going to help her milk to let down. Just the massaging mo motion. Um, causes that reflex that lets the milk down and so she'll be all ready for me once I get my bucket and start to milk. Um, after I wash her I just squirt the first few squirts from each teat onto the ground and this is just flushing out any dirt or crusty stuff that might be in that tip of that teat and it's just flushing it out. Um, some people put it in a cup. My barn floor is a barn floor so I don't mind just squirting it on the dirt. It doesn't bother me. So I'm going to squirt that out Oh, and I think you should know, um, I'm actually not truly milking right now. It's about 2 o'clock in the afternoon, and so I usually milk in the mornings. This is just a demonstration only. So right now, her calf has been with her all day, so her udder is pretty empty. So just keep that in mind. Okay, um, my milking stool is really high tech. Are you ready for this? It is a very dirty 5-gallon bucket, um, and it works. I guess you could use something fancier. This is what I use and it's just fine. So I put that there. Now this bucket is important. This is my actual milking bucket. It's a 13 quart stainless steel. Um, these cost a little bit of money but it is totally worth it. Um, don't use plastic. Don't use glass. You really need stainless steel to make sure you can sterilize it appropriately and get it clean. I also encourage you to spend a little extra money and get a lid. This is going to save lots of milk from getting clods of manure or flies or curious dogs sticking their nose in it. So get the lid. It's totally worth it. And this is just a seamless stainless steel bucket. Um, and it's super easy. I can put it in my dishwasher to sterilize it or you can just wash it with hot soapy water. So this one is important. The stool bucket, not so much. Okay, so um, when I get her feet positioned. This is the perfect way for her feet to be with this cl close hind foot farther back and the far away hind foot closer and that way gives me nice access to her udder. Um, if she's not staying like that sometimes I can readjust her a little bit. And I just kind of let her know I'm down here um, and go to milking. I don't really have a set pattern. I just kind of, I start with the teats closest to me and kind of go around the udder. If I do have calves on her like I do right now, I will leave sometimes a quarter or a quarter and a half, kind of depending on how many calves are on and what time of year it is. So, and like I said, I'm not actually milking right now because it's the afternoon. So she has a lot of, um, well, she doesn't have a lot, a lot of milk in it. So, um, and as I showed, if you've ever watched my goat video, um, this is like a, 
it's really not a pulling motion when you milk, it's more of a trapping and squeezing motion. This is Rue, and she's trying to get in my milk bucket. Go on. So if you just sit here and pull down straight on the teat, Rue, your face is in the way. Pull straight down on the teat, you're not going to get much milk out. So rather you're kind of trapping the milk in the teat and then squeezing it out with a wave motion in your fingers. So I know it's hard to see because the camera's are far, far away. But it just takes a little practice, but um, you're, you're going to get it if you just work at it a little bit. So at first I would just milk with one hand, trying to coordinate my fingers. And then as I got better, I could move to two hands and got faster and faster. So um, you'll get in a rhythm and kind of go every other teat. And she will whack you in the face, especially if there's flies like there are right now. Um, and that just kind of comes with the territory. Generally, a milk cows are pretty, I mean, depends on the cow, but they're not going to be violent with their hind legs once they get used to you. Um, Oakley, every once in a while she will kick the bucket or she'll stick her foot in the bucket. But I can usually, if I keep an eye on her hind feet, I can um, see it coming and move my bucket out of the way. This cow, at least, is not lightning fast. I hope your cow is not lightning fast either. Usually I can see her pull her weight off and get ready to move that foot, and I can move the bucket in time, most of the time. There are plenty of times that I have had to give my milk to the chickens because it's got a foot in it, and that's okay too. It, it just happens. So I'll go around the teat and milk her all out. Um, there's not much in her right now. And... Um, then after I'm done, I take the milk to the house right off the bat and I put it, I strain it and put it in the fridge as soon as I can. Um, I don't really do a teat dip. Some people do. I think that's fine if you want to do that. I haven't had much of a need to do that. I figure maybe this is poor reasoning, but the calf doesn't have the teat dipped after it gets done nursing every time. So I figure I'm not too worried about that. If her udder is dry or the calf has had left bite marks on it, I do have my udder balm. Um, hey. I do have my udder balm that I like to put on her udder that helps um, with cuts and sores or if she's chapped. So that recipe is on the blog too. I will link this, that recipe to this post. So um, there's my really basic milking routine. If you have any questions, please leave a comment on this post and I'll do the best I can to answer it. And thanks for watching. We'll talk to you later.